Ah, Hollywood. The evil temptress, where talent often overshadows any sort of character flaw. Balancing your public life with a career in the entertainment industry can be a tricky thing. And as we've all seen with the advent of social media, where a person tweets out something dumb 10 years ago, only to have it brought back up when they have a new movie dropping. But actually, celebrities have seen their careers implode long before the World Wide Web had social media platforms to do stupid stuff on. Think back to the story of Fatty Arbuckle, one of the highest paid silent film stars of the era, whose talent and fame were overshadowed when a woman was assaulted and died at a party hosted by the famed comedian. Arbuckle was acquitted of the crimes, but his career never recovered. This kind of stuff has been happening since the beginning of cinema, and now it's happening to actors in the talkies. But I do think we've never really seen a career implosion like what we witnessed in 2023, when an emerging talent had a spectacular breakout year that was even expected to end with a film that would have seen him nominated and possibly even win an Oscar. But instead, the year ended with that project shelved, potentially never to see the light of day, and a career seemingly cut short when the dark side of his private life was exposed to the whole world. Like, it seemed like this guy was famous for literally 15 minutes before he f***ed it up. So yeah, let's find out what the f*** happened to Jonathan Majors. Don't tell me I'm a disappointment. No. Just a little bit easier to kill. <laughs> but to truly understand what the f*** happened to Jonathan Majors, we must begin at the beginning of the beginning began when he was born on his birthday, 1989, California. Majors began his life living on an Air Force base with his family, as his father was in the service, before relocating to Texas, where Majors would later say that his father just kind of disappeared, abandoning the family for 17 years. This forced his mother to take care of him and his two siblings. His mother would eventually earn a master's degree to become a pastor. Majors has said that his mother's spirituality and hard work were major influences on his own life. But sometimes, without a male role model in a young man's life, sometimes some people start to act out and unfortunately, a confused, angry, young Jonathan Majors did just that. He was always in some sort of trouble, whether it was fighting in school or getting arrested for shoplifting. Funny enough, it would be fighting in school and getting into trouble that would eventually lead Majors to discover acting. After one of his many fights at his Dallas area school, Jonathan Majors was enrolled in an alternative education program which would include performing on stage, something Majors chose after being inspired by seeing Heath Ledger's performance in The Dark Knight. So yeah, this amazing superhero villain performance would go on to inspire Jonathan to eventually pump out his own superhero villain performance in real life and on the screen. Oh! So yeah, acting would turn into a passion for young Jonathan as he enrolled in the University of North Carolina School of the Arts before attending the prestigious Yale School of Drama. It would be while attending Yale that Jonathan Majors would land his first big role, playing young Ken Jones in 2007's Gus Van Zandt miniseries, When We Rise. That same year, Majors would make his big screen debut in an intense, gritty western that's pretty darn A-OK, -okay, kinda. It's good, yeah. The Christian Bale starring Hostels. After another two supporting roles in the Matthew McConaughey movie White Boy Rick and the crime drama Out of Blue, Majors would land his major breakout role in the critically acclaimed independent film The Last Black Man in San Francisco in 2019. 
Despite the film receiving a limited release with a box office take that isn't even worth mentioning, it was the critical acclaim that came from this film that essentially put Jonathan Majors on the radar to the rest of Hollywood. The Last Black Man in San Francisco had strong Oscar buzz coming out of its buzzy Sundance premiere. And although Oscar glory never came for this film, it did secure nearly 80 nominations from various other respected organizations that hand out golden idols, including several Best Supporting Actor nominations for Majors. He would finish out 2019 by appearing in three under-the-radar films, including Captive State, Gully, and Jungle Land, before landing a decent-sized role in Spike Lee's joint, The Five Bloods. This would be the first role that Majors got that he didn't have to audition for, as he says that one day he was just told that Spike Lee wanted to meet him. Master filmmaker Spike Lee had been very impressed with the stuff he had seen Majors in and offered him the role on the spot. And The Five Bloods was a very big hit for Netflix, also nabbing Majors along with his castmates a nomination for the Screen Actors Guild Awards for outstanding performance by a cast in a motion picture. Later that year, Jonathan Majors would return to TV for the highly anticipated HBO horror series Lovecraft Country. The series would garner strong reviews, calling it marvelously entertaining. But sadly, it would be cancelled after just one single season with the studio citing budgetary reasons. M -m 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 money Those tentacles must be expansive. The series would go on to receive over 140 nominations, including individual recognition for Major's leading performance. From more respected organizations that hand out golden idols, like the Emmys, he was nominated for that, Critics' Choice got a nomination, and some more Screen Actors Guild nominations. Yippee! By 2021, Majors would start to break out into more mainstream appeal by hosting Saturday Night Live, because that's what you do if you're a celebrity. And he would star in a Netflix western called The Harder They Fall, where yet again he would rack up nominations for his flawless leading performance. But it would be his other released project in 2021 that would begin to lay the seeds of an A-lister on the horizon. Jonathan Majors would appear in a single episode of the Marvel Universe TV Disney Plus series Loki, where he would play He Who Remains and Victor Timely, two characters who are variants of the powerful Marvel villain Kang the Conqueror, cause uh, multiverse stuff or whatever. So yeah, Marvel was laying the foundation for their next big villain. And in the cynical, angry world of Marvel fanboys, the casting of Jonathan Majors in that role was a rare occurrence where most everybody seemed to be on board with it. Yes! 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 What, what's the worst that can happen? In 2022, we would see Majors appear in the true story, Devotion. That sadly was not a huge hit, kind of overshadowed by Top Gun Maverick and earned $21.8 million off a $90 million budget. But this showed the type of projects that Majors was interested in. Everybody loves the Marvel paychecks and the fame that comes with them. But Jonathan Majors' filmography has mostly been about telling black American history, whether through fictitious stories that highlight those experiences or through films like Devotion that tell true stories of overlooked heroes. Devotion's actually an incredible film, which probably would have become a classic if it was released in a different time. But I wish Hollywood would make more movies like Devotion. But it would be the year 2023 that would forever alter Jonathan Majors' life. Majors was primed for a huge leap forward in his career. He would kick off the year by appearing in the highly anticipated Creed 3, where he would play the film's antagonist opposite Michael B. Jordan's celebrated Adonis Creed character. So yeah, basically Jonathan Majors was taking on the huge responsibility of becoming a rocky bad guy. 
even though this is a Rocky movie without Rocky. But you know, he had some major shoes to fill. And no, he doesn't play Mr. T's son. Jonathan Majors would actually receive enormous praise for his performance in Creed 3, with critics calling it raw and powerful, showing that he truly is a force to be reckoned with in the ring and on the screen, as an actor, as an athlete, as just an all-around artist. Jonathan Major's next role was one that had more attention on it than any other project he had ever worked on. The Marvel Cinematic Universe seemed to be in a bit of a rut since Avengers Endgame concluded their first big story arc, as the heroes vanquished their mortal enemy, Thanos, who was one of the greatest movie villains ever put to screen. So there were some giant purple shoes that needed to be filled, but I mean, who could live up to what Josh Brolin was doing with the MCU? So yeah, in the meantime, everybody who cared was wondering who was gonna be the next big baddie. What antagonist will our heroes go up against next? In February 2023, we got our answer when Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania hit theaters and audiences were finally introduced to Kane the Conqueror, as played by Mr. Jonathan Majors. This kind of wacky, fun, stupid movie would divide fans, as most would find it to be a lackluster entry into a fading franchise. But there was one aspect of the film that seemed to garner unanimous praise, Jonathan Majors. He was absolutely perfect as the new purple bad guy. His performance alone got fans excited about the MCU again, and we almost cared about where it was heading. I am not a but everybody was so proud, so excited for Jonathan Majors, he had finally hit the A-list. And you know what? He frickin' deserved it, too. The man worked hard and turned in powerhouse performances. He got famous the old-fashioned way with mother talent. Everything seemed to be looking up for the star. He would reprise his role in Loki Season 2, which had already been filmed, and was awaiting its release on Disney+. Plus. And rumor had it, Jonathan Majors could have potentially ended out the year with some solid awards heat, as his film Magazine Dreams had garnered genuine Oscar buzz for Mr. Majors when it premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in January 2023. If ever a year belonged to a performer, 2023 was Jonathan Majors' year. He was a superstar. I am king! And then... In an instant, Major's world came crumbling down, as if Thanos had just snapped it all away. On the evening of March 25th, 2023, Jonathan Majors was arrested for a domestic dispute when his girlfriend told police that he had assaulted her, resulting in Majors being charged in several counts of assault and harassment. Jonathan's representative would release a statement saying that Majors had done nothing wrong and was in fact the victim of the assault. And he looked forward to clearing his name. His name, John Jonathan Majors. The arrest made national news and the repercussions were immediate, with the army pulling recruitment ads that they had shot with the actor, while Marvel remained tight-lipped around what they were going to do, simply saying that Majors would appear in the already completed Loki season two. They weren't gonna do another Johnny Depp, Innocent until proven guilty, due process, and all that stuff. They were just gonna wait to see what a trial of his peers and our legal system would decide. By June 21st, there seemed to be a bit of a tide shifting in favor of Jonathan Majors. He was frequently seen arriving to court with new girlfriend Megan Good by his side, along with several pieces of information released by Jonathan Majors' attorney that hinted that he was actually the victim of the assault, a claim that seemed to take further proof when Majors would file a domestic violence complaint against his alleged victim. And for anyone following the case, this would turn into one of those he said, she said kind of things. Nobody was really sure who to believe. 
And then, on June 29th, 2023, Rolling Stone magazine released a scathing article where several people from Jonathan Major's past would detail years of erratic and often abusive behavior by the actor. Rolling Stone had conducted a three-month investigation into the actor, where they spoke with over 40 individuals who knew Majors throughout his life, including romantic partners and fellow students at the Yale School of Drama, all the way through production workers of his film Magazine Dreams. All sources wished to remain anonymous out of fear of Jonathan Majors. Through these interviews, Jonathan Majors was painted as a man with a violent streak who was adept at being emotionally, verbally, and even physically abusive, with one of his former girlfriends telling several sources that dating Jonathan Majors was, quote, emotional torture. The story that emerged from the article was one of a performer who was so intense that it made those around him uncomfortable and fearful. But it also showed a man whose private life was filled with unrealistic demands from those he surrounded himself with. A controlling individual that demanded to be in charge of those he was romantically involved with right down to the food they would eat. Some of these claims seem to have been backed up during the trial, with an audio recording of Majors telling his alleged victim that he was a great man and that he expected her to be like Coretta Scott King or Michelle Obama. Because for some reason this silly little actor man thinks he can compare himself to a great civil rights leader and a frickin' president. For his part, Jonathan Majors, through his attorneys, said that the allegations made by Rolling Stone magazine are false and that he never physically, verbally, or emotionally abused anyone. Have you ever had issues with domestic abuse? I've, I've witnessed it, um, but never participated, you know. I mean, I've, I've, I've been smacked up before, you know, but... Yeah, never, never exercised it. On November 29th, 2023, the trial against Jonathan Majors would begin, and through it, a picture would be painted of Jonathan Majors that was a far cry from the talented actor we had all grown to admire. Video footage would be shown from the night in question showing Jonathan Majors shoving his alleged victim back in the SUV, while also showing footage of Jonathan Majors running away from that same victim as she chased him. And text messages were released where Jonathan Majors discussed wanting to kill himself. This was truly a trial that could have gone either way. It seemed like there was evidence on both sides that could have seen a verdict of not guilty just as easy as guilty. On December 18th, 2023, a jury of his peers found Jonathan Majors guilty of misdemeanor assault in the third degree while recklessly causing physical injury as well as harassment in the second degree. The jury did, however, find him not guilty of misdemeanor assault in the third degree, with intent to cause physical injury, and misdemeanor harassment in the second degree. Essentially, the jury believed that Jonathan Majors did not attack his victim, but through reckless behavior caused the injuries she sustained that night. It wouldn't take long before the hammer dropped. Shortly after the verdict against Jonathan Majors was read, Marvel would formally drop Jonathan Majors from their roster. So yeah, I don't know, Kang just ain't gonna be a thing, I guess. While the release of his film Magazine Dreams, a film that had many claiming would get Jonathan Majors an Oscar, was put on the back burner indefinitely, with no current plans to release the film. Which I don't know, do y'all agree with that? I mean, lots of other people helped make this movie. It wasn't just Jonathan Majors, so why punish everyone? I don't know. Comment your comment in the comments. We conquer eternity and the dynasty of kings. Mr. Majors sentencing is scheduled for February 6th, 2024, which if you're watching this video on the day it was uploaded, that's like less than a month from now. But most of the legal experts out there are saying that there's pretty much a 0% chance that he will actually do any prison time. So yeah, it is still very unlikely that this actor will end up behind bars. Of course, uh, you never know, especially with today's legal system. Am I right? Or am I right? 
So, as you know, the character of Kang the Conqueror is expressed as many different people, akin to how Jonathan Majors plays many different people in his personal life. And his worst variant is that of an abuser. Let's just hope that in the future, we are able to see a good, a positive variant of Mr. Jonathan Majors. So yeah, Jonathan Majors started the year 2023 on the top of the frickin' world and ended it a guilty man with no career. On January 8th, 2024, Jonathan Majors would sit down with ABC News for his first public comments in nearly a year. In the interview, Majors maintains that he never put his hands on another woman in his entire life and calls all claims against him to be completely false. Jonathan claims that his biggest mistake was not being brave enough to end what he called a toxic relationship and that he wished he had not gotten back in the car that night. For some, the interview came across as a man who still couldn't take responsibility for his own actions, while others claim that Majors was the true victim and eagerly anticipate his comeback. As you know, career implosions are nothing new in Hollywood. Over the past few years, we have seen some of the most prominent names in show business lose everything overnight when their seedy private lives were exposed for the whole world to see. But we really never have witnessed one like this. Jonathan Majors was only just beginning to become a household name in a time when movie stars don't really exist anymore. He was truly something special that I personally was rooting for and I know pretty much everybody else was too. We were really excited to see what new projects this guy was gonna bring, what new characters he was going to transform into. Like seriously, it had been a long time since I was excited about a new young actor. He was already being compared to some of the greats. But then, in an instant, that name, which was associated with talent, became forever tainted with violence. Jonathan Major's guilty verdict may not have been the nail in the coffin, but that Rolling Stone article certainly was the beginning of the end for the actor. It would appear that underneath that talent was a man who needed to control those around him and control the narrative of his public persona. And we've said this many times before, but Hollywood is actually a forgiving place. And oftentimes, talent can triumph over anything. And for Jonathan Majors, only time will tell if audiences will embrace him again. Or will his public persona fade away due to the details of his private life that he fought so hard to hide? So if you want to give a f about what the f happened to Jonathan Majors, you can give a f about what the f happened to Jonathan Majors because there's a lesson there. And I guess that lesson is don't f hit women.